Okay, good morning and welcome to class. We continue in the study of the book of Acts. Uh, we will pray first and then we uh, get into Acts chapter 13. I would like to request uh, maybe Zeli. Zeli, could you lead us in prayer? Okay, let's pray together. Father, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. Father God, as we begin our session, Lord, we pray for your grace, your strength, your wisdom of our pastor Nancy. And also, I thank you for each one of us who are here in this class. I pray for a good connection that, Lord, there will be no hindrances and everyone will be able to attend class. And also, Lord, uh, we ask of you, Holy Spirit, to help us, teach us, because you are the greatest teacher. And Lord God, may you lead us throughout the classes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Zeli. So in the last uh, class, we looked at Acts chapter 11 and Acts chapter 12, where we saw how, um, you know, the church of Antioch, that it was growing and the way in which Barnabas and Paul ministered in that place. We later on saw that in Acts chapter 12, um, Herod wants to lay hold of the leaders of the church so that he can create some fear he can create, uh, you know, some sort of um, uh, an intimidation among the people. Uh, however, we saw that though James, uh, uh, the brother of John, he was killed, uh, Peter had a supernatural escape. God sent an angel to bring him out. But we also saw that uh, one of the important practices of the church was to really pray and uh, uh, there were people who were constantly praying for peter no wonder god did something so amazing in his life and he brought him out we also saw how towards the end of that chapter herod uh, he is boastful uh, and he uh, proclaims uh, uh, you know proclaims his greatness but at the same at that moment, we saw how judgment came upon him because uh, we know from scripture that uh, God gives grace to the humble, but God resists the proud. So the pride of Herod and how that brought such a uh, devastating end to Herod's life is something that we looked at. Now we move on to Acts chapter 13. Um, I was telling us initially that uh, um, the first you know, uh, initial growth of the church. We saw that from Acts chapter 1 to about Acts chapter 8. We saw how people like uh, Philip, who were volunteers, they were moving around and they were taking the gospel out to the nearby regions. And then from Acts chapter 8 till uh, Acts chapter 12, that is again, you know, a place where we saw uh, because of the movement of the disciples, there were new churches planted, but there is a specific account of the uh, Church of Antioch, which uh, was observed by us. Now we will consider the next 20 years from Acts chapter 13 to Acts chapter 28 would be the next 30 years uh, in the happenings of the book of Acts and uh, here the primary focus you know so far I was telling us that um, uh, Peter uh, isn't it Peter was uh, one of those prime figures in the church the leader of the church uh, and uh, the focus was on him but there was an introduction to a man known as Paul um, in Acts chapter Acts chapter 7, but then Acts chapter 9, where he uh, has an encounter with the Lord and his life is transformed. So we will see the focus shifting to Apostle Paul from Acts 13. And uh, initially, when we started out the book of Acts, we were discussing about the many reasons uh, as to why Acts was written by Luke. And uh, one reason that we stated was that it could have been a defense brief that Luke wrote to uh, set Paul free from the prison. Uh, and that is why a lot of the book of Acts is about Paul and what he did and, you know, what came against him and whether he was wrong or whether he was right according to the law. So we will observe all of these details in the writings of uh, 
look as we go forward so what we have seen so far as i stated earlier the initial 8 years and then the next 10 years initial 8 years that's acts 1 to acts 8 uh, uh, is what we saw where the outpouring of the holy spirit uh, took place we saw the journey of the church um, then acts 8 to acts 13 uh, roughly about 10 years there and uh, you know we saw the movement of the church the the revival uh, uh, fire spreading now acts 13 to acts 28 is the next uh, 20 years so a total of about four decades is covered in the book of acts uh, and uh, so the initial 20 years roughly 20 years is devoted uh, to the church the jerusalem church and the next 20 years the focus is more on the missionary journeys of this man called paul so in acts uh, 13 to 28 you know we will observe that uh, paul sort of becomes that trail blazer who takes the gospel uh, uh, to the mediterranean region now we know that primarily um, Uh, you know paul is only able to touch uh, parts of the mediterranean and also uh, some portions of europe uh, even though in acts 18 we have that promise where god said uh, and you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you you shall be my witnesses in all of uh, jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth but given the uh, circumstances of those days and the travel limitations uh, the work was just getting started so many of us may question why is it that they did not reach the ends of the earth but remember i said that the book of acts is in a sense um, being done or being taken forward through each one of us so we are all the ends of the earth right now different ones in different countries different um, you know parts of the globe and we continue to carry these revival fires and spread the gospel spread the power of um, the spirit the work of the spirit so though the initiation happened uh, in the book of acts it hasn't stopped okay god's work continues but particularly uh, in the book of acts it's the mediterranean region and parts of europe where um, uh, paul's ministry was done so um, a little bit about paul you know i'll just share a few details you can find this in the uh, apc publication known as uh, Revi- um, revivals visitations and moves of god uh, so i'm sharing it from there a little bit about you know uh, the timelines in paul's life so ad 38 is roughly when he was converted in damascus uh, and uh, the age we may wonder you know how old was paul at that time he was roughly about you know 29 to 33 years old and uh, for some of us that's very encouraging to know that uh, uh, you know paul came to know the lord a, a little later in life but that was not a a uh, restriction in any way for him to serve god well and we know how passionately he served god and how much he did you know for the kingdom of god uh, and then we see once he was converted he was very um uh, uh, again passionate to go ahead and do the ministry that god called him to do so he tries to go and preach in the synagogues of damascus for a short period of time uh, but we know that he was not accepted because of his background because of the fear that people carried about him and uh, you know people were worried whether he was just um, uh, uh, an, an impostor uh, trying to you know sort of masquerade as a believer and that uh, he might get them into trouble he might uh, catch them and put them in the prison so people were not ready to listen to him so he tried doing some ministry in damascus um, it didn't really work out then he went to uh, arabia uh, and in uh, parts of arabia is where he uh, started preaching to the gentiles uh, now where do we get a picture about the life of apostle paul we definitely read a few portions in acts but 
to build a complete picture we may have to go into the epistles because he writes about himself um in the epistles as well so we would need to combine aspects of uh, what is mentioned in acts as well as uh, you know some of the epistles particularly in the book of galatians he he um, gives some details about where he was what he was up to so galatians chapter 1 throws light on uh, you know his whereabouts so we said that uh, he went to damascus not very well accepted but later on he moved to arabia there he preached to the gentiles and this is mentioned in galatians uh, then we see that he returned to damascus and uh, for the rest of the three year period he continued to preach in the synagogues of Damascus. maskers um then we uh, observe that um, you know people even tried to arrest paul people from arabia attempted to arrest uh, paul however he escaped uh, out of damascus and traveled to jerusalem his stay in jerusalem you know this is uh, you find a little description of this in second corinthians chapter 11 verses 32 to 33 so he went to jerusalem just for 15 days so that's not a significant time uh, for him to learn everything uh, from the apostles so uh, you know it is said that uh, though the apostles had the privilege uh, the early apostles had the privilege of walking with jesus learning directly from jesus uh, that was not something that uh, paul could boast about uh, because uh, his conversion happened uh, much later uh, and he did not necessarily spend a lot of uh, personal time with the apostles so uh, yes the doctrines he would have picked up from the apostles and many teachings a lot of guidance he would have received from the apostles but he was a man who had to probably do a lot of hard work to learn the teachings of jesus by himself and uh, thankfully he was a scholarly man and we know that you know he would have been able to get a grasp of uh, um the the teachings um so personally you know sort of one to one from the apostles or one to one from jesus uh, that was not a uh, an experience that paul had so uh, even when he writes in second corinthians chapter 11 i hope i said second corinthians earlier uh, in second corinthians 11 when he talks about uh, communion you know he uh, instructs uh, regarding the communion uh, he even states that uh, you know he received from revelation okay uh, the 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 truth about jesus and communion and all that so that is also something for us to note that he was really moving in the power of the spirit and receiving revelation uh, from god uh, even some things that uh, we see him write throughout uh, in the epistles how did paul receive this kind of information um obviously you know a man with a strong prayer life and a man who was receiving revelation from god that's the kind of man that apostle paul was uh, and so you know this is how it is so initial days uh, damascus arabia those were his his uh, places uh, of hanging out and uh, then he moves to jerusalem just for 15 days so in the short visit in jerusalem what are some things that uh, you know could have happened in uh, the life of apostle paul you know we know that the apostles also were scared um, they were not very happy to receive this persecutor uh, but thank god for uh, a man like barnabas an encourager who uh, attempted to introduce paul to the apostles and uh, you know he he uh, tells them that uh, now he's changed so we must give him an opportunity so because of barnabas uh, paul is accepted and uh, he uh, paul ends up spending time with uh, james and we find this again in galatians chapter 1 so what happened in jerusalem he went barnabas was the one who uh, put a good word for paul uh, but then he was able to spend time with james okay so the lord's brother so the lord's brother meaning remember i mentioned there were two james um 
in the in the book of acts one who we uh, see that he is killed in acts 12 uh, that's the brother of john but the brother of jesus or the half brother of jesus james he became the uh, leader of the early church so apostle paul spent time in those 15 days who did he spend time with he spent time with james okay the leader of the church so obviously a lot of impartation learning uh, must have happened and uh, that is something that he carried in his life later on uh, then what else do we see so even when he stayed in jerusalem paul is very bold he speaks in the name of jesus uh, he proclaims the name of jesus he even um, is so confident that he engages in debates uh, with the uh, uh, the Hellen hellenists remember we said that the greek speaking jews are the ones who are known as the hellenists so uh, paul's ministry has not stopped even though uh, his acceptance right now is uh, uh, quite uh, bleak among godly people then you know we uh, see that as paul is doing his ministry uh, opposition is always there uh, earlier when he was in damascus the arabians tried to come and um, uh, sort of catch him but uh, now in right now when he is in jerusalem again there are um, um, rumors of plots against paul and uh, because of this the early disciples also they think that it might be better to take him to a safe place so they escort him to uh, caesarea so he goes to caesarea uh, they put him on a ship and they send him home to his place so where is uh, paul from uh, which is the region that he's from i had mentioned this in the last class his original place saul of i hope uh, talsas talsas yeah yeah correct thank you thank you lubega so yes saul of tarsus okay so tarsus uh if we look it up now it's somewhere uh, it, it's a city in uh, uh, south central turkey so that is where tarsus is uh, um, along the uh, tarsus river and uh, yeah so that's a, that's some uh, description about tarsus and um, it was in the region of uh, any any guesses we know about the city of tarsus but what region is uh, tarsus in or tarsus was in saul or paul of tarsus but the region is it cilicia correct yes cilicia cilicia so uh, tarsus was in cilicia so you might find uh, uh, you know the origin of uh, paul being mentioned as uh, paul of tarsus <coughs> excuse me or uh, paul of cilicia because it's the region tarsus was in the region of cilicia so that's about the origins of uh, paul now we've seen that <coughs> in the initial years he tried to do ministry and uh, he was not very well accepted uh, but he uh, thankfully got some acceptance from the apostles now we can continue to build on his life and see you know what could have happened to paul so now he is in the region of cilicia that's his home region and the bible talks about uh silent years that he spent there so when we say silent years maybe about 6 uh, years to about 10 years uh paul you know it, he would have been in that region where he would have been uh continuing to do the ministry continuing to learn 
the word of god continuing to get grounded in the doctrines and uh, it's only later on so now about you know 6 years or some people say even 10 years silent years where we don't read much about uh, paul so this is from the period of uh, you know uh, acts 9 we read about him we saw how uh, you know he was made to escape of uh, from damascus then we don't really read about him because he was in cilicia so acts 9 to acts 11 acts 11 suddenly barnabas is there uh, he's providing assistance in the church of antioch of syria uh, but he goes and he brings saul of tarsus to uh, the church of antioch so what's happened now we only skip one chapter right like acts 9 Saul was there. Uh, Acts eleven, he's back, but there's one chapter in between, uh, Acts ten, where we uh, saw more about Peter and how God led him to go to the Gentiles. Uh, but in that period of time, which is you know like like uh, in the life of Paul, that is a period of uh, let's say nearly ten years. Okay, so. 10 years have gone by and uh, then barnabas actually goes and he brings him to assist him in the work of antioch as a teacher so in acts chapter 11 we suddenly see the reintroduction of apostle paul and uh, his ministry starts off so overall if we consider right from the time of uh, um acts 9 when he actually escapes <clears throat> so there are people who kind of calculate the the duration and uh, they say that you know he was not really doing active ministry so up to 17 years sometimes is attributed to these silent years of paul where he was not necessarily an uh, approved apostle of uh, um, you know the the believers in jerusalem or in the region so that's a lesson again for us to learn that even the mighty apostle paul went through his own season of preparation uh, that god is not in a hurry uh, even when uh, let's say you know paul's life we said that uh, uh, he started off around the age of 29 33 uh, it already somewhere feels like oh wow it's it's pretty late you know uh, god should give him a lot of ministry right away so that he is able to serve god uh, for the rest of his life yes that's true but notice how god had to take him through a season now what could have happened in that season we don't really have any record of it uh, but his vision was strengthened because we find him preaching we find him standing up boldly for the gospel so uh, even though he was not accepted he would have um, strengthened his determination to serve the lord that's amazing because something like that is required in our character to serve the lord with focus to serve the lord with commitment and uh, paul went through that so silent years when um, he was not popular he was not the uh, you know famous preacher who uh, people reached out to to come and minister but he was faithfully serving the lord that much we know so god really worked on his character in those silent years uh, in order for him to become this great man that we all talk about now what were some of the other matters within paul that god needed to work on uh, we are not very clear determination of course passion of course because his passion only grew for the lord and we could even say that uh, his knowledge in the the doctrines would have become more thorough um, reason is when barnabas went and he brought paul he brought him uh, in order to teach in the church of antioch so it's likely that word may have gone out saying uh, here is paul who is also a good teacher of the word he is able to teach uh, the truth accurately so let's have paul come to antioch and let's have him minister so you see uh, there was a good 
reputation or a testimony which was built up in with regard to uh, paul which is why barnabas asked him to come and assist him so this is a little bit about the life of paul so that you have a background otherwise what happens is you know paul in acts 9 he goes to damascus and then there's no background whatsoever so then we are wondering what happened to this man where is he at what is he up to all of a sudden he reappears uh, you know in the uh, acts 11 and slowly uh, you know he becomes the the carrier a sort of the sole carrier also you could say yes there were other people who joined him in the ministry but you know he becomes the um, uh, he he is steering the movement in the book of acts uh, from acts 13 so he gains a position of incredible importance so we need to know uh, how is it that paul actually uh, became the paul that we talk about so from acts chapter 13 we will move into the missionary journey uh, of uh, apostle paul we'll see how god uh, set him aside uh, along with barnabas to do this work and we see that uh, the initial initial journey okay this missionary journey is for roughly about 2 years uh, from ad 44 to ad 46 and there are some places that are covered by paul and barnabas uh, we'll see how they <coughs> enter the regions how they strategically um, preach the gospel we will observe that they generally tend to pick uh, the place where there is openness so uh, in the synagogues uh, those i mean in general they had this opportunity to go stand up and share so uh, paul made use of that opportunity so he straight away went to the synagogues in different places and he started preaching about jesus and when there was uh, a resistance in the synagogues you will find that he moves on to uh, uh you know the gentiles and he starts to preach to the gentiles so in this manner he's covering uh you know different communities and then he's just moving forward uh with preaching the gospel so there are some places where he will go to and uh, he will minister so roughly 2 years is the first missionary journey uh, and you know we will we will uh, look at that uh, just give me a moment okay maybe i'll come back to it later so yeah we could probably first go through uh, acts 13 and then as we're talking about uh, the missionary journey uh, i will show you the map i think that will be a little clearer than me uh, showing it to you right away that's what i'm thinking okay just one moment let me see if i can all right i think well, let's do that uh, we will come back to this so right now let's go to acts 13 and uh, start to read we are in ad 44 okay uh, so uh, we we now have you know the focus shifting on apostle paul so let's look at that uh I, maybe we started reading from verse 1 i'm not uh, very sure yet but uh, let's let's start again uh, acts chapter 13 and uh, verse 1 uh, can someone help us read uh, three three lines of acts 13 acts chapter 13 yes now in the church that was at antioch there were certain prophets and teachers barnabas simon who was called nico lucius of cyrene manen who had been brought up with herod the tetrarch and saul as they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy spirit said now separate to me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them 
Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you for uh, reading that portion. So, uh, in the first few verses, uh, we know that we are back to the church of Antioch, uh, which is a thriving church. A good amount of teaching has happened there by Barnabas and Paul. Um, and now we are also introduced to a bunch of prophets and teachers. So it helps us recognize that even back in the book of Acts, you have a, a, a team that is ministering. So it's not so much an individual pastor who is the sole overseer of the church, but it seems like there was a team ministry which was going on. So there is a set of prophets and teachers and their names are mentioned here. We have uh, Barnabas. We already know who he is. He's a good man, a Levite, uh, you know, who, a giver, an encouraging person. Then we have names of people like uh, Simeon. Okay, Simeon, um, it is also mentioned that he was called a uh, um, nigger. So uh, in the writings of Luke, when he mentions as a nigger, so back in those days, uh, they would use that description for um, African uh, people in the congregation. So, you know, that terminology was still used by Luke, uh, but to identify a Simeon. So we know that uh, he was from another country. Uh, so uh, apart from this, Simeon was probably the person who helped Jesus carry the cross. And we see this in Luke chapter 23 and verse 26. So that's a little bit about Simeon. Barnabas, we know Simeon, okay, uh, would have been uh, a person from an African origin. Now, moving on, there is the mention of this man called as uh, Lucius. Okay, Lucius of Cyrene. So it already uh, mentions where Lucius is from. Uh, we will look at the next person, Man Manaean. Uh, he, about him it says, being brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. So we know that Herod was um, uh, a person of authority. If Manaean was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, uh, that goes to tell us that he was uh, probably from a rich family and also well-educated. Uh, now, think about this. You know, you have Barnabas, Simeon. It's talking about where people are from, Lucius. And it's also giving us a little bit of insight about, uh, you know, whether they were learned or not. Uh, so in the case of Manayan, yes, he was a very learned man, uh, maybe similar to... Paul, we don't know because even Paul uh, was a learned man. So what we can say is that there was a team of ministers in Acts, uh, in the church of Antioch who probably had a uh, had varied experiences as far as their background was concerned. But based on their calling, they were all serving the Lord together. So we could say it's a multidisciplinary team. It's a multicultural team uh, as well. So today we see a lot of churches around us who have people from uh, different countries serving together in the same local church. It's not different from the Church of Antioch. Even back in those days, we had a, a, a sort of a multicultural team serving in Antioch. So it really helps us see how people were serving and uh, they were willing to serve together. They were willing to use their graces and their gifts to um, equip the body of Christ. Now, in Acts chapter 2, we see that uh, they ministered to the Lord and fasted, it says. So here we are seeing an aspect of seeking the Lord. How did these leaders serve the church? They, like the early church, had the practice of prayer. They had the 
practice of spending time with the lord so they are continuing that so they are ministering to the lord uh, that's wonderful because see usually when we talk about ministry it's always about ministering to people what about ministering to god acts 13 talks about it so there is a ministry to people but there is also a ministry to god in other words you know we know that as seeking god we spend time in his presence so the leadership team of the church of antioch uh, we saw the description and what are they engaging in they are ministering to the lord they are people who seek the lord they seek the lord for his guidance they seek the lord for his strength um they seek the lord for his presence so they were praying they were ministering to the lord and they fasted it says so they waited upon the lord in fasting uh and what happened at that time so it's very beautiful uh, when the the leaders fasted and they sought the lord god responded to them okay so that's the beauty of it we are ministering to the lord we are speaking to god and what does god do he speaks back to us so that's really uh, something for us to register every time we spend time in prayer or we uh, spend spend time even corporately worshiping the lord seeking the lord we can expect the holy spirit to speak to us and give us his instructions so the holy spirit he speaks to these leaders and says now separate to me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them so god is now giving a clarity about a, a a kind of a it's not really a shift but more of a god calling people into their primary uh, responsibility so regarding saul remember ananias had a word ananias had this word where god said see i'm going to use him uh, he's going to minister to the gentiles he is going to be a witness to many leaders people in authority so now paul is moving in that direction that god has for him so that's what is actually happening god is calling barnabas and paul for the work for which he had actually call them so it was the right time for paul to step into his ministry then the bible says after having fasted and prayed they laid hands on them and sent them away so laying hands on them and sending them away that is such a practice in the um, uh, early church so laying hands is nothing but uh, commissioning commissioning the uh, the disciples and sending them out to do the work that god has called them to do so it's basically commissioning that is taking place here uh, where uh, the other team members are praying over barnabas and saul and they are sending them out for what god has called them so now starts the missionary journey they begin to travel around travel about uh, and we will see how this journey actually takes place so uh, would uh, one of us be able to read the passage here we are at verse 4 you may read till verse 12 at chapter 13 verse 4 to 12 yeah. so they been set forth by the holy ghost departed on to celestia and from the de- and from thence he sailed to cyprus and when they were at salamis they preached the word of god in the synagogue of the jews and they had also joined to their ministers and when they had they had gone through the issus unto pavos they found a certain sosra a false prophet a Jew whose name was Bargis Bargisus which was with the deputies of the country Sergius Paulus a prudent man a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God but Elimas 
the sorcerers for so in in his name for, by interpretation he stood them seeking to turn away the depths of from the faith then Saul who also is called for filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and he said O oh, full of all subtlety subtlety and all the mischief thou side of the of the devil, thou enemies of all righteousness. We thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, nor see the sun for its season. And immediately there fell on him and mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Verse 12. Then devotee, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrines of the Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, Abu Bakr, for reading that. Uh, yeah, I'll come to that. Okay, so Jafina is asking here regarding the what I mentioned about Simeon carrying the cross. Just give you the scripture for that first. Uh, Luke twenty three twenty six, where um, you know it says uh, Simeon, a uh, Cyren Cyrenian. Okay, so it's likely. Now I'm not saying that it's. Uh, it has to be that person. It's likely that it could be this Simeon only who um, carried the cross. Okay, fine. So let's move on. Uh, we came here now to Seleucia, uh, which is where they went first. Let me quickly... Okay, I'm uh, not too sure if you can view it with great clarity, uh, but here we are. So Antioch, Antioch of Syria, which is your base church or the mother. Uh, may, we won't use mother church because generally Jerusalem, Jerusalem is, is the mother church that we refer to. Uh, so this is a branch church. Okay, so you can see here the journey like you have Caesarea, uh, Tyre, Sidon. Uh, so Antioch is, is somewhere here in the region of Syria. Uh, from Syria, they move to a place called Seleucia, right? So from Seleucia, we see them journeying forward. So this is how they travel. They come to uh, Salamis, uh, uh, Cyprus. Okay, this this region here and Paphos. Paphos is where we see um, regarding the false prophet Bar Jesus or, or Elimus. Uh, so we'll talk about that, and then we will find this team continuing to other regions. So they will go to uh, Perga and uh, uh, Pisid Pisidia, uh, you know, Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, Derby. Uh, so in this manner, they will they will journey on, and then they will even return. You know, they'll just return back. So the arrows, you have got to follow the arrows. So they go to these regions, and then they sort of come back also. Okay, uh, and we'll talk about that. So from here, uh, at Italia, and then they kind of come back to uh, Antioch. So we look at that. But for now, I just wanted us to have a look at um, Antioch. And since it mentioned Seleucia, uh, it's right here. And they're traveling out Salamis, uh, Cyprus, Paphos. So this is where we are. And then the journey will continue. Uh, Sidia, Antioch, and so on. Okay, so uh, if this this much is clear, then we can uh, continue in our uh, reading. 
so what did we see so far we saw that uh, god has called uh, paul and barnabas for a missionary uh, role and uh, they step out but we'll see that it's not only a missionary role for paul it's apostolic because he'll start planting churches he'll start overseeing churches raising up leaders so there's an incredible work ahead of uh, apostle paul um, so now we saw how he moves uh, to down to seleucia sailed to cyprus arrived in salamis and then you know he uh, starts to preach the word of god where does he preach i told us earlier the common place to go to in any region is a synagogue because synagogues were open and people will allow anyone to come any jew to come and minister there or preach there so he would just go into the synagogues and start to uh, preach and uh, at this point there was uh, an assistant with him his name was john okay who is this john you may recall acts chapter 12 remember mary in her home prayer was going on she was the mother of john mark uh, and john mark is this is this wonderful uh, man who is journeying along with uh, paul and barnabas now they come to cyprus and over there they go to the island of paphos there an inter- intelligent man or a man of uh, um Uh, some position you know he is eager to learn more about god and so he wants to hear from paul and barnabas uh, regarding um, uh, this jesus but what happens is there is a spiritual opposition or a spiritual hindrance uh, and this man is not able to um, receive the word what is that spiritual hindrance there is a false prophet by the name of bar jesus or elimus who uh, is causing that spiritual hindrance in uh, uh, sergius paulus receiving the gospel and so you know uh, uh, paul steps in filled with the holy spirit he rebukes uh, this person and elimus uh, 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 goes blind for a period of time uh, and uh, when this happens you know it, it's like binding the work of the evil one and that's what uh, paul does uh, and the sergius paul is is now open uh, to the teaching of the lord he's able to receive so we learn from here that even when we preach the gospel there can be spiritual opposition but when we bind uh, the the works of the uh, demons then we can preach the gospel and there is a greater openness you'll also notice that uh, there is a mention in verse 9 Saul who is also called Paul uh, I, i don't know if you've ever wondered we keep saying Saul Saul uh, till acts 13 and then suddenly the name shifts to Paul what is the significance of that well both were his names Saul and Paul were his names from the beginning but Saul is a more Jewish uh, Saul is connected to his jewish uh, roots so saul is a jewish name whereas paul is the roman name that he used uh, so maybe as uh, luke was writing the the defense letter he found it useful to refer to paul in his roman name and that is why from now you you see paul paul you won't see saul anymore he'll start talking about uh, paul and barnabas paul and barnabas okay so let's stop here we'll come back i know you may have more questions uh, but we'll have our discussions let's pause for uh, uh, stop for 10 minutes and then we will come back so let's go in for a break we'll continue at 10:00 thank you